Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to go back and take another look here at the backdrop that we worked on last week in that previous video where I showed you how to bend the, uh, the curve into this backdrop. Today what I want to show you is a couple of things that I managed to do, plus we're going to go ahead and attach the backdrop to these vertical supports in a way that will allow you to slip this out and take it off anytime you need to transport the module or to work on it for any other thing. So stick around for the video and we'll get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. So one thing I mentioned in the last video is that I was thinking about adding a curved radius to this end of, uh, of the backdrop so that we didn't end up with this, you know, squared off pointy thing sticking you in the face. So I went ahead and decided to make this curve. And for that, I just used the uh, lid from one of these uh, five gallon buckets that you can pick up at Lowe's and Home Depot, places like that, and just use that to mark a curve here uh, on, the, uh, on the backdrop itself, and then I just use my jigsaw to cut the radius out. So that gives it a nice finished look. It's going to look a lot better than that piece of, uh, home or piece of hardboard sticking out here, uh, ready to poke you every time you come around it. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to show you. Now the main thing I want to take a look at today is how I wanted to attach the uh, backboard here to these vertical supports because, you know, if you have the, uh, there's a little bit of tension on it, so to hold it against here, but there's a potential for it to get banged around. So I want to have some way for it to be firmly attached to the upright so it's not going to do that. And the same, same thing for the, all these others. So I've got uh, a total of eight of these vertical supports. And my main concern is to create some way to attach the backdrop to the uh, vertical support up here at the top. So let me show you what I've come up with. Um, first thing, I took a simple piece of one by two and I cut a bunch of these. I cut 16 of these, two for each one of these vertical supports. Uh, this is a simple one by two piece of uh, pine, I think, yeah. And I cut them three inches long. Now, how is this gonna work? Well. The next thing I did was I took a countersink bit and I drilled a hole through one of these pieces and set it up so that it's going to mate with another one. So we create this block right here and this, because it's screwed on, it can pivot. So let me show you how this is going to work. By simply attaching this to the back of the layout, that is going to firmly hold it in place. It's not going to be able to bang around. But when I want to move it, all I have to do is rotate this block here, and that allows it to move. So it provides a nice little inexpensive, easy to install clamping mechanism. All you have to do if you want to take off your backdrop is loosen all of these by flipping them up and then you can just lift the backdrop right up out of, uh, out of its slot and do whatever you need to do. So it allows you to remove the backdrop, work on the back side of your module, however you want to do it. What I want to do now is show you how I mount these because I had initially thought that I might use epoxy to hold these in place. However, after looking around, I decided Gorilla Glue was the way to go. So when I was up at the uh, hardware store getting supplies the other day, I got me a bottle of this original Gorilla Glue, and I'm going to use it to uh, firmly attach the blocks to the back of the backboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. Now I've zoomed in onto this side because this is the side that I'm going to work on. Now one thing you have to be careful of with the Gorilla Glue when you put this on is that if you put it on too thick and it oozes out and gets between your backboard and your upright, then it's going to stick to the uh, backboard itself. So you got to prevent that from occurring. So what I've done here is I've taken some plastic cling wrap 
common name Saran Wrap, I guess, is a very common commercial brand, but everybody sells their own version of cling wrap these days. But I just took this and I wrapped it around the top of this upright. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but it is on here and it's in there pretty good and pretty tight because I want to have a nice fit. But that, I hope and I assume, is going to prevent the Gorilla Glue from uh, getting in here and doing anything um, and gluing two parts together that we don't want. So the next thing that they tell you, or the next thing that I want to do is I need to separate this uh, piece that I've screwed on uh, from the piece I'm going to attach. And we'll take that one off and set it aside. Okay, and that's the, uh, that's the block that I'm going to attach right here. Now when you're using Gorilla Glue, they tell you that first you need to dampen or moisten the side, one side that you're going to be gluing. So I've got my wet sponge here and I'm just going to wet this whole area like that because uh, the chemistry of this, the Gorilla Glue uses uh, water for setting up. Now another thing they tell you is put on a pair of rubber gloves. So I'm going to do that. They tell you it will stain your hands and you don't want to get this stuff on you. These are some rubber gloves left over from some of my painting exercises. So I'm just going to use these. And then all you have to do with the Gorilla Glue is put on a good dollop here. Okay. And I'm going to close that off. And then I have a coffee stir stick here, so I'm just going to use that to, you know, smooth it out all over, spread it all over the uh, back of this wood block. Like this. Okay, so. And I know that's going to just ooze out all over the place. Plus, you, one thing you have to be aware of with Gorilla Glue is that it expands and foams as it dries. Now, at this point, I'm just going to put it on here where I've moistened it. And we're going to hold that in place for a second. Like that. Okay, so I've placed the block here on the backboard where I want it. I've got my clamp. And I'm just going to clamp this guy in place here. I don't want it quite touching the vertical upright. Okay, so that's that one done. So let's go ahead and do the other one here. So I've got that set up. Let's go ahead and add our cling wrap. And it's going to cling, so you don't have to worry about pinning it or taping it or anything. So there it's set up. Okay. Now let's see, where's my other block? Here's the other block. And I'm just going to remove that piece. Got my sponge again, so I'm going to wet it. Okay. And we'll get the Gorilla Glue one more time. Like that. Cap it. And we're going to give it a nice spread all over the surface of the wood. Like so. Cover the whole surface here, and that's it. Okay, I've got it marked where I want it. So let's pop it into position, like so. And I have my clamp, although it's got a mind of its own, it seems like. Let me see if I've got a clamp that will reach in from the end. No. Okay, I'm not going to be able to clamp that all the way. Well, after searching through all of my clamps, 
I can't find anything big enough to reach far enough in. So what I'm going to have to do is position this clamp here on this side. And that way I know I can get to it. So let's give that a try. So we're going to put some on here. And spread it again. Got that on there. And now I'm going to go ahead and wet this side. Or dampen it anyway. There. There. That should do it. And we'll put this in here, like so. And that makes it easier. I can clamp that without any problems. So you have to be ready to make some changes uh, when you find out that your pre-assumed uh, uh, intentions are not going to work. In fact, I'm going to bring that back over here just a hair. There. That should be good. And to keep it in place, huh. okay, there we go. So now this is doing its job, it's going to start setting up. Let you take a look back here for a second. If you look right here in the corner, you can see it's already starting to foam up. So that's why you need to clamp these things. They will not stay in place. That foam will push it away from there and you won't get a good joint. So you need to, need, you need to clamp this thing for several hours. Uh, I think they say one or two hours, but I, I'm going to leave it clamped for 24 hours and we'll see how that works. So I'm going to turn off the lights and the camera and I'm going to do something else while this guy sets up. Well, it's been 24 hours and the glue has set up quite nicely. So let's take the clamps off and see if it worked. Get this one. See the, the glue foamed out through the hole that I had there. So we get all these off. And, okay. Everything comes apart, at least, for now. So let's see if our uh, cling wrap did its job. Assuming I can get it off. Okay, it is, uh, appears to be stuck to the, uh, to the glue. So let me just uh, cut it off. And we'll see if we can't peel it away. Okay, I need to take one more clamp off down here so I can lift this up to do the peel. So that removes all the clamps that hold this in place. So I can lift this up a bit now. Let me get some of these pieces of uh, hardboard that I put in here out of the way. There we go. And now I can just lift this up and hopefully we'll be able to just peel this off. Uh, well, it's going to stick a little bit, but not too bad. Tell you what, I'm, let me get a, yeah, let me get a pair of tweezers. And we'll see if we can pick it out of here. Okay, that's out. This here, I'm going to go ahead and just use my, uh, Use my knife blade and see if I can't uh, pop it out. The foam in action of the uh, Gorilla Glue meant that it oozed out quite a bit. So let's see. There we go. Okay, that one's pretty well cleaned up. So now I'm just going to pull this one. This one just came right off in one piece. Okay, let me get it back into location. There we are.
got everything in there. And we have a little bit of foam that oozed out right here, so I'm just going to clean that out using my chisel blade. There. Now, the next thing I want to do is reinstall these clamps. There we go. And because the uh, because the glue foamed out here, matter of fact, I still need to uh, I still need to chisel off a little bit of the uh, glue that oozed out here and set up. There. Since that is not very smooth, I'm going to just hit it with a little sandpaper and get that roughness out of the way. Get. There we go. Pretty easy. And now I'm just going to hit these screw holes again just to open them up. Careful that you don't go through the side and punch a hole in the uh, backboard. Okay. So we'll reinstall this one. There we go. And I'm going to install this one over here. Okay, so at this point, I need to uh, there we go. So now that gives us a nice clamping action there. And it's not going to get knocked off. There we go. And anytime we want to remove the backboard, we can just flip our clamps up and it's ready to be removed. There we go. So now I have to do that on the other six uprights here on the layout and it'll be permanently in place. Okay, uh, at this point I've got one more thing uh, to show you, but I've got to finish that first. And that involves painting the backdrop on the other side here. So I'm going to get that off of here, take it out, uh, and uh, into the garage at least, and go ahead and paint that. It's raining here in Asheville, so uh, I can't do it out in the driveway, but this will be fine. Well, it's yet another day and I've gotten even more done here on the backdrop because as you can see, it's now a nice robin's egg blue. So beautiful blue sky like you see every day uh, throughout England uh, over there. Uh, don't believe what they tell you about it raining all the time. Every time I've been there, it's been clear as a bell and beautiful. So we have a, a nice curved backdrop that flows all the way down uh, at, to the far end of the layout and curves the same way down there, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and, and take a look at the completed backdrop here. As you can see, we're at the right-hand end of the layout, um, and you can see the area where the gas works is going to be located, and honestly, I am working on it. I've uh, advanced to the point of adding uh, glazing to the uh, insides of the windows, so, you know, I'm making progress. It's just that I don't seem to find much free time anymore to work on anything. Uh, but let's go ahead and start moving uh, the camera around and do a, a sort of a panning shot. And uh, you can see as we come around here towards the center of the layout where the, um, where the joint is going to be, 
uh, later on once I do get the printed backdrop in place, I don't think you're going to really notice uh, the split there in the center because it's, it's, uh, it's going to look very, very close uh, at that point. Now let's go ahead and move on around. So we're, we're moving into the station area and the goods yard. I still have a lot of clutter on the layout for scenery work and the like, but as you can see, we do have that completed backdrop all the way around with that nice curve. And I'll bring you around to the uh, right end again. I'm really happy the way, uh, the way it turned out, even though it is just a plain blue uh, background at this point. As I've told you before, I will eventually be installing uh, the printed backdrop that goes on here. Um, I do have two copies of the version that goes down on this end. However, I'm very reluctant to go ahead and install anything down here because I am sure that as soon as I did that, they would probably discontinue the other end and I'd be stuck with trying to peel off uh, the um, printed backdrop from this end. But at any rate, um, I encourage you as, as early as possible to put in, uh, go ahead and put in a backdrop because it does help isolate the layout and get you thinking about finishing off the scenery because um, I still you know, have a lot of scenic work to do here, but because I don't have that printed backdrop in, I really don't want to start installing stuff uh, until I see how it's going to look and how it's going to blend in with the materials that I've chosen to use here on the layout. Got some cattle here laying down on the job. Um, so, so that's why I've basically held off on that. Um, as far as next week, well, uh, I, have a, I have an idea uh, for something that I want to do for Monday's video, but uh, I only have two out of the three things that I need to do that with, so it will all depend on how fast uh, FedEx gets the other thing here. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe Saturday, I don't know. But hopefully it will get here in time for me to shoot a video and get it edited and uploaded on Monday. Um, if that doesn't happen, it will probably be, get pushed back for the Friday video. But at any rate, there will be at least one video next week. Um, I know I've said that I was only going to do one video a week anyway, but, you know, I just can't stay away from it. I really do enjoy doing these Monday and then Friday videos uh, to kind of book in the week. Now that I've said that I will only do one a week, it takes kind of the pressure off of me. So uh, if I do a second one, it's sort of a bonus. So I plan on doing at least one and possibly a second one uh, for next week. It'll all depend on how fast the shipper goes. Uh, other than that, that's a wrap uh, for this video. Uh, have a great weekend and uh, take care of yourself. And we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.